Manchester is blue, sad to say. It's, it, it's hard to come to the realities of it, but Manchester is blue. That doesn't explain the reason why I have on this blue shirt, though. But Manchester United has lost again to Manchester City in the derby yesterday, 3 1. Um, I'm going to give me a post. I mean, I've done my post match reaction yesterday, but I'm going to give a few more key pointers from that match. Um, yeah, yesterday's game, man, it, it, it's just what. The doctor ordered, you know, it wasn't a game where Manchester United were expecting to come out with a win. Although I said in my preview that we could nick a win. I did say that. We could get a win and we could, you know, shoehorn it, you know, defend it out, you know, see it out. But that wasn't the case. We got a goal in the seventh minute by a lovely shot outside of the box from Marcus Rashford. Top beans off of the, you know, the rooftop, as some may call it, off of the crossbar in and out. Came out same time. I love those type of goals. And you would think that Manchester United would hang on to the horns of the match. And they did in the first half at least. But in the second half, things changed. The atmosphere of the game changed. Now, of course, hold on. Of course... In the game itself, I didn't watch the first half as I admitted yesterday in my match reaction. But in the second half, Manchester United Manchester United fell off. We were basically trying to have possession as if, you know, we're running the, the show. We're running the show. You're not, you're, you know, you, we can play possession ball too. But it was all for naught. We had like 25 possession, 25 ball possession, and they had like 70 75. That is not a good return. That's not a good return. And it goes to show, say, not only is Manchester blue, but Manchester Manchester has been blue. Now, let me read you something that I saw on Sky Sports on Instagram. Tale of the tape since Sir Alex Ferguson left Manchester United in 2013. Premier League titles, Manchester City 6, Manchester United 0. Major trophies since Sir Alex Ferguson left in 2013. 17 trophies for Manchester City and 4 for Manchester United. Season top in Manchester. Manchester City 10, Manchester United 0. Premier League derby wins since Sir Alex Ferguson retired in 2013. 11 wins for Man City and 7 for Manchester United. Hmm, not so bad. Um, Premier League games won by 5 goals plus. Man City... Five, actually 34, 34 times they have won games in the Premier League with five goals plus, and Man United won. Approximate, approximate net spend for transfers and etc. For Man, Manchester United, it's $1.2 billion, and Man City, 795 million euros. It's actually, it's in euros. Is me, it's actually in euros. So that goes to show you that not only is Manchester United blue, but all across the board, from head on to top, you know, to the toes, from from when it comes to football in period, we're how to run a club. Manchester City beats us all across the board. They have us hands down in that area. But in the game itself yesterday, man, in the game itself, it shows that there are certain players that should not be at the club. That we still give a pass to, we give a blind eye, we say, we give, we, give, we give them a blind and say, they're good enough, but they're not good enough to be starting. Like, they're good enough to stay at the club, but they shouldn't be starting. Now, I would say there are some players that are not good enough that shouldn't be starting, but they should come off of the bench. Skamak Tomney, I, I, I would mind keeping Skamak Tomney if he's going to be kept on as a sub like a Marwan Fellaini type of sub the sub that kind of comes on and you know change up the game if you're looking to hoof the ball to him then he's an option but we shouldn't be playing his type of football and we have seen that on a Jose Mourinho Sofian Amrabat now this is a player that caught a lot of scrutiny yesterday given that he gave away the goal um, not he gave away the ball yesterday that led up to the third goal for Man City for Holland, Holland to score I've said this yesterday. Sofian Amrabat is not a mobile defensive midfielder. And I stick by that. He's not mobile by any stretch. 
I think a third class bet better flexibility than this guy. Is me and, and he's not the type of defensive midfielder that should be playing with his back to go anyway. And that proves the point in how he gave with the ball yesterday. He should not be given he's just look, sis, he's not good enough for Manchester United. I thought he was the you could say the savior, the defensive midfielder that could release the the players like Bruno Fernandes further forward, Miss Mount further forward and that type of thing. But I've seen the games he's played and especially when he was playing at left back in the earlier part of this season, I was still suspect of him. You know, I was still suspect because he was trying to play inverted left back and it wasn't looking as smooth. I remember that he gave a, a couple goals in the Champions League and he was playing left back. I think it was in the Capital Cup uh, in the Capital One Cup or the Champions League where he was he had possession of the ball and gave it away and them go score. And the same thing happened yesterday. So but there is there's they're saying that his loan spell at Manchester United, Fiorentina, based on out certain outlets are saying that Fiorentina is considering him bringing him back in uh, May or June, whenever the season ends for Manchester United, because his stock as a player is decreasing. And that's because of his bad loan spell at Manchester United. So things are not looking good for him right now. And it makes sense. I mean, this is not the guy we should be bringing in. This is not the defensive midfield that we should be aspiring to bring in. He's not the Manchester. He's not a Manchester United caliber uh, defensive midfielder. But in the game itself, man, also... What other... Onana. Let me talk about Onana for a second. Anana is not a Manchester United goalkeeper. I don't even think this version is a goalkeeper, period. But the fact that he's at Manchester United and we just signed him, we're not going to be selling him anytime soon. So we're, be, well, I don't think we're going to, I mean, we can sell him, but are we ruth? Well, we have new people coming in, so maybe we'll be ruthless to sell him as soon as the summer comes. But right now, he's not proven himself to be a proper signing this season he's considered over 50 goals and this is his first season i believe if you were to come if you were to ask me which debut player had the worst debut season out of the year in 2011 2012 and on on 2023 2024 hands off hands down i would say on on now david here was a young youth coming from atletico madrid coming into the Premier League is me and he you know he he's gotten a few games at at Madrid but coming to Manchester United was a bigger pie for him to eat and see in his first season David De Gea he wasn't the David De Gea of all he was nowhere near David De Gea he person was saying okay this bridge what well, basically per, basically what Kepa was for Chelsea David De Gea was in his first season at Manchester United he was considered goals left, right, and center. I remember Jacko go score a goal outside of the box against his brethren in the community shield. When was the last time Jacko go score a goal outside the box? That's never heard of. He's more of a target man. Most of his goals come from inside the box. And his brethren go score outside of the box against David here. But in comparison with Onana, the type of goals that Onana has conceded. And the sheer arrogance that he has shown between the sticks. Some persons just don't like the bridging. Some persons just do not like Anana. Just, just, just don't, don't like Anana. Because number one, he's not a good goalkeeper. Based on what he has been like this season. And it doesn't matter what he's done last season for Inter Milan. As um, some footballers would say after retiring, they would say, it doesn't matter what you have done in the past, it's what you're doing now for your club. You can do whatever you have done for a previous club and that's already written in history. What you do for this club that you are, you are at right now matters. So it doesn't really matter what he's done back in the past. What you're doing right now matters, man. And right now, Anana is not showing, is not proving the worth of the amount of money we signed him for in the summer of last year. He's not, he's not proving, no. He's not proven to be, um, yeah, so in terms of our defense, Vern was good. I believe Vern was good, at least solid. Um, John Evans was showing his age. 
and that's you know that's supposed to be expected i mean he's human so i'm not expecting him to play like alberta nesta from 2006 for ac milan for manchester united when he's 35 but he's 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 capable he's capable but we should not be starting Johnny Evans if we're looking to win the Champions, the Champions League and the Premier League. So that is an area that we need to improve in the summer. Especially if Varane is looking to move on to greener passes. Isn't it? So that's something we need to consider. In the midfield, I've said this and I've already talked about um, Sofian Amrabat coming on. I believe Kobe Mino should have stayed on with Casemiro in the midfield to at least stabilize it because we see now Amabad came on and just like a fish out of water he could not adapt to the temperament of the game and that's shown why when once it was pressing us he became a culprit he gave away the ball and Haaland was score so that was a bad decision from everything Hawk to bring on Amabad in that game of of intensity now, of course, person will say, well, you know, you have to make your subs, you know, you have to make your subs, you have to play your players in front of the bench and make a sub. And I said that, but look at the game, man. City was not trying to slow. Now, usually, City would slow down the game by the 80th minute, just knock around the ball, etc. Waste time, you know, keep ball possession. But City was, is that they wanted more goals against us to prove something. Usually, we don't kill off the game, like, well, like 75 minutes or 80 minutes if they are winning. But the fact that they were still pressing us as if they were like a goal behind, it was a bad decision to put on Amrabat. It was a bad decision to put on Amrabat. A bad decision. So, yeah, I'm, yeah I should have, I would I would have kept on Kobano. Well, if Kobano was getting tired, then of course I'll make a so but you know, I don't, I wasn't getting that in, indication that he was getting um uh tired excuse me in the attacking third Ganacho as I've said he did I didn't see much of Ganacho on the right hand side no in the second half he was switched to the left hand side after um what happened what happened what happened after McTomney went back in midfield I believe because he was playing up top in the first half and um Rashford went no, wait, Rashford was playing, yeah, Gardacho played, was pushed to the left hand side, Rashford up top, and um, Anthony came on the right hand side. Now, I would have preferred Diallo in that game, but understand that Erting again to want to risk Ahmad Diallo was not been getting much games into that type of game, and he would have put, on, put in a disastrous performance, which I understand. But, you see, Anthony didn't make much of an impact. He's not an outlet Manchester United should be relying on. Anthony with Onana are one of our, as so far, this is so far this season, because things think, think can change in football. Football is very unpredictable. Anthony this season for Manchester, like even last season, for these two pre, for these two seasons Anthony has been at Manchester United, he has not proven his worth. I don't think he has proven at least 40 mil of the 80 mil that you have signed him for. I don't even think so. This guy is not a goal scorer. He can't beat a man. He's not even attacking. In terms of his output. Like when he gets the ball. A few times he just cut in. Pass the ball. Keep ball possession. He's not looking to at least try to beat. No. In his defense. He tried to beat um a couple of players yesterday. You know. When we were counter attacking. He ran with the ball on the right hand side. And of course went on for a throw in. Is me, but he's not very attacking. He's not a he's not a direct player like a Rashford, like or a Gonacho. He's not very direct. He doesn't look to beat his man. He doesn't look to beat his man. Is me and he, yeah. So these players are not Manchester United quality man. And again, if we're looking to at least win the trophies that Man City have been winning for these years after. So Alex Ferguson retired, then these are not the players that we should be going for. And certain players, persons are still back in this manager. This man, let me go read something. I saw something on uh, Facebook and it showed me some records. I'm not going to read all of them, of course, 
because I don't want this video to be a 15 hour video but I saw something on YouTube not on YouTube on um where is it on uh on our uh, Facebook and he was saying it I think it mentioned at least 19 record records records that everything I got is broken not in a positive light since he's been at Manchester United I read most at least 16 of them I think it's more than 19 of them I think it's at least 16 of them and they're not they they're disastrous and there are persons that still want this bridging to sell Manchester United and spend our money on useless players no that's that shouldn't be happening that shouldn't be happening that shouldn't be happening but anyway man in wrapping up this video in the Manchester Derby Manchester United has been blue let's 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 put that to the soul right now Man City has been blue and they have been blue for a time and a half they have been as the Bible would say time and time and a half a time Man City has been blue for time time and a half a time they have been blue for a long time since again even I would even say since in in the latter stages of Sir Alex Ferguson City had you know Sir Alex Ferguson on the ropes a few times I mean hell they won the Premier League and the last of the Premier League in 2012 so even then and that is see, this is one of the reasons why I don't think person, any persons or any United fans have called it out but I believe this is one of the reasons why Sir Alex Ferguson popped up and retired because he knew that City was an erupting volcano that was getting stronger by the hour meaning every season so the fact that him go in the Premier League with the squad that he had in 2013 he knew that he would not have pulled that off the next up the next season he knew that he would never pull that off the following season because City is looking to recruit and they have recruited players which led up to Jose Mourinho's press conference in March of 2018 when he did the press conference against Burton in FA Cup talking about football heritage. That's what he was talking about. The recruitment of players, how the football club is run from top to bottom. That's what he was talking about. You look at Manchester United, now we're making changes. But right now, for the last <laughs> 10 years, you look at Manchester United, Manchester United has not been run like a football club. And certain persons think that what football club is run is has nothing to do with how we operate on a football pitch. That's a fallacy. That's a delusional fallacy. How the football club is run inside, it actually, at least to a degree, has an in that has a an imp not an impression. I'm missing the word right now. How the football club is run from inside with the CEOs and etc. Getting proper football persons has a big impact on how the football is played on the pitch. Not maybe not um not maybe not in an in maybe not in a direct way. I can't talk this morning. Maybe not in a direct way, but indirectly it has an impression based on how the football club is run. And if the football club is run properly as a football club, the the, the how the footballers play on the football pitch is going to be you know, man, I'm missing the word. I can't, man, I can't even speak English. What's going on with me? Based on how the football club is run from inside, it's going to be indicative of how it's going to be played outside. You look at Barcelona from 2004 to 2000, and um, let's use from 2004 to 2011. F proper football people, they got, they had a proper football president, Laporte, when he was in his prime. They had proper, they got fo proper football players. They didn't have the best of managers, but they had managers that yield to the, the way of football at Barcelona. La Masia using the young guys from La Masia, the La Masia young recruits, you know, bring them into the first team, making them know that this is Barcelona, Barcelona, you know, uh, whatever. And that was shown. You see me? They had a football heritage. They lived for that football heritage. And that's because of all things we're on the inside. So I'm not going to be hearing this this fallacy that we how things are on the inside doesn't have anything to do with the football pitch. Yes, it does. Everything. Yes, it does. The players you recruit, the style of play, the culture 
Yes, we are bringing in young players. Um, Forsen played in the, the City derby yesterday. Um, the young defender, he was very hands-on, Phil Foden and Holland, I believe. Yeah, he was very hands-on yesterday in defense, the young guy. I can remember his name. Is me, but to be honest, are these players that we see at Manchester United right now and we think to ourselves, in five years' time, these players go to be at Manchester United? Hmm? Be honest, do you think these players are gonna be at Manchester United for the next five coming uh for the next five years? Phil Foden came out of football came out of the card economy in twenty seventeen for, for City and he's still playing ball. He's twenty two right now and this bridging has been playing for City like it's been for forever, like he's been playing for City since Rashford came out to the Academy in twenty sixteen. With me. But he's made more of an impact right now. He's a very impactful player for Man City. Phil Foden. And persons were asking questions whether Phil Foden would step up with with Gundogan gone, with Maris gone, is me. Um, would he be the main man to step up? You know, with with David Silva gone, would he be the player to step up? And he has stepped up this season anyway. He has gotten his numbers high. He's putting him outlet in terms of goals and assists in his name. And yes, I'm looking over the camp of Man City because it goes to show you that Man City is a well prepared run club from top to bottom. This means they have a world class manager, they have world class players, they have a style of play, they have proper football uh, uh, play people that run the club, and they have owners that will do anything in their pockets, in their might and power and influence to get the players that Pep Guardiola wants. And you can call it checkbook manager you can call it you know you know spend a lot of money the fact is this if you want the best players you're gonna to have to spend some money you see me you have to go spend some money with your pocket it can't be pinched with the money it can't be pinched that is the, the the modern transfer market right now it's become very inflated so yes you're gonna to have to spend a lot of money on certain players that are not even that good but that's just the market right now you have to go deal with it so wrapping up in the game uh in the Manchester Derby man um hey if you have been up read watching up until this point leave your comments in the comment section I know I've been rambling but it's a proper rumble that that had to come out for matches because it just goes to show say City has been an indomitable force since 2013 and that has been actually they have been start they have, uh, Man City started becoming more of a prominent side since 2010 so they got in a final in twenty. They were trying to. All they almost knocked out, knocked us out in the, in the Carabao Cup in twenty ten. I'll go beat them at Old Trafford. Wayne Rooney with a header. I remember it vividly. And in twenty eleven, they beat us in the FA Cup final. Balotelli was a menace in that year. They beat us six one at Old Trafford in twenty eleven, and him going the Premier League in twenty twelve. So ever since, they have seen progression with Man City. Yes, they yes they have you know they are not the most football football of clubs when it comes down to how it's run because they're money people yes, but at least they're getting the job done. So I don't want to be here no complaining. Tombo say, you know, yeah yeah they they're oil money run club man they're oil money run club. City is getting the job done, and the thing is that I don't even want to be back in City because I'm no City fan but. When you're objective Man United fans, you have to put, you have to nip your hat and accept defeat and know your place. I know my place. I accept greatness from City, and they have shown. Because the fact is this: even if they have been spending all of that money, which they have, and they haven't won any trophies, we'll still be criticizing them. And they have won the trophies, and still criticizing them. So it's that like they can't win any corner. They can't. They can't win at any corner. While us trying to play by the rules using our youngsters we ain't getting the job done greenwood is probably the best youngster out of our academy since um <laughs> since like for a long time i would say since <sighs> huh. who was the last player aside from before me oh pop pop pogba 
is the law is is the is the is 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 the, is a uh, I would say mainstream women is the best player to come out of our economy since Paul Pogba. Yep, yeah, so that's since twenty eleven. Yeah, so it goes to show say you can play by the rules, but that means say, you're not going to win the game. You know, City has been winning the game and they have been winning trophies. So you can complain about that till you're blue in the face, pun intended. The fact is this. If you don't, if if you if you if you strive for success, you have to bend the rules a bit. Yes, you can play your youngsters, and CD is playing youngsters now. They have Oscar Bob that Oscar Bob that came on for Phil Ford yesterday in the, in the in the derby. And they have youngsters. They have uh, Lewis Rico Lewis. They have uh, Gavio. They have youngsters, man. They have youngsters, so yeah. So the point I'm making is this: in wrapping up my my uh, take for the Manchester derby, Manchester United, Manchester is blue. I accept that right now. The dominance is out there and it's in front of your eyes. Ray Charles can see that, so if he, they can see that and they can't see anything, then you need to accept it, cause I'm seeing something that you can't and you have better eyesight than them. The second thing is that our players are not good enough. Certain players are not good enough to be starting for one, and certain players are not good enough to begin with. At the, they, they shouldn't be at the club. Three, this manager is too incompetent to be managing at Manchester United. I have been saying that for, for months now, since October, since I became everything I got out. It's me. And... Yeah, man, this is just, um, <sighs> let me say something about Rashford. Rashford, um, I believe Rashford said something after the game and he said, if you, what's, what's the quote he said? Let me go check again. I forgot the quote, but he was saying something, I think it was to his haters and critics saying that, um, the players, hold on, uh, if you, if you believe in me good. And if you doubt me, that's better. Hold on, let me go check it. He was saying something to that effect. Um, let me go check, let me go check, let me go check, let me go check. Um, man, why am I missing it? I can't even find it. But the point is this. He was basically, you know, trying to say something to his haters that, um, you know, he, if you don't believe in him, then I'll say this, bro. Rashford is not a Manchester United quality player. And he knows that. But to save face, look like he has strong mentality. He cannot come across as if he's coming under pressure. You understand? So he has to come out with a statement, despite losing the game, that he is a strong mentality type player. But the fact of the matter is, he's not a Manchester United quality player and he should not be starting if you're looking to win trophies. That's the reality of the, the, the matter. So you can talk with Chess that, yes, you, you know, if, if, you, if you doubt me, even better. If, well, if you believe in me, that's good. But the fact of the matter is, man, Rashford has his qualities. He has his qualities and on his day, he can be very good. The question is that whether he can be good on them days for the majority of the season another question his consistency has been called into question this bridging is a questionable play when it comes down to being consistent very consistent very inconsistent sometimes you never know what you go get to rush rashford so yes rashford can say oh you know if you don't believe in me that's even better if you believe me then good but he's not a manchester united player man not a starting one anyway so anyway, I don't want this video to end on a negative cloud note. The point is this. We have, uh, who we have next? We have Everton. No, we don't have no Everton. We have in, in our next game. I don't remember. But the point is that we can still get up for. Yes, we can still get up for. Despite us losing the, the derby, despite us not playing well, we can still get top four now whether or not we get top four is another question but we can still do it comments down below 
I'm going to finish the video at the 30th minute mark. Leave your comments below in the comment section. I'll show you guys in the next video podcast. I'm out.